Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I have a fun thing to do. I'm going to play with a new resin mixer. So last summer I got this resin mixer. It is from Estoyo. It's the Cordless Resin Mixer Pro and it is awesome for uh, mixing resin uh, and reducing bubbles and not having to stand there stirring it for minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes. And minutes. So this is great if you're doing resin. And so the company actually said, can we send you this latest one and see whether you like it better? So this one is the Cordless Resin Mixer Ultra, and it comes with a stand. So the stick itself is very similar, except instead of just turning clockwise and counterclockwise, it has three different speed settings and a counterclockwise and clockwise version, um, and it has an auto setting where you can put it in the stand and you know put a cup of something for it to mix and turn it on and it'll mix for four minutes and then shut off by itself. So this is really great if you don't even want to stand there holding it for those minutes. If you just want to set it, leave it. Now if you don't use resin, you can still use this. I'm going to be using it today mixing up some pouring medium from bloom pours and you could also use it to mix base paint anything where you've got a large quantity and you just want to make sure it's well mixed you could use this to help you one other difference between this one and the other one is it has two different sizes of paddles there's the regular small paddle but then they also have larger paddles so this is great for if you're wanting to mix larger things. Okay, now let's get started. So if you don't know what I mean by a bloom pour recipe, um, Shelly from Shelly Art she invented this technique called the Shelley Art Bloom, and it involves a different recipe of paint. And there's a cell activator that gets blown or swiped over the top, and it makes this beautiful lacing. So it's, it's a distinct category of acrylic pouring, and it takes a different pouring medium. So instead of my typical Floetrol or maybe glue or some other type of pouring mixture, there's a specific one, and it is usually it is usually. What it is, the recipe is untinted house paint and then some sort of gloss something or other like polycrylic or Joe Sonia's gloss polyurethane varnish. Um, I'm using polycrylic because that is what I have used in the past but I have never used the bare deep base uh, high gloss enamel. This was recommended by Lisa Marvin, and she knows a lot about bloom pours. So I got a quart because it's kind of an expensive paint. This cost me about $20, um, but I don't do that many blooms. So I think this is gonna last me a while. And if I need more, I can buy a gallon later, but I'm gonna be using this and this, and I'm gonna start by mixing it about two parts of this to one part of this. A lot of times people mix it thicker and then they thin it down with the polycrylic or the Josonia's like in each cup. I haven't needed to do that when I've done bloom pours, but anyway, this and this, those are my ingredients. And I've put the polycrylic into this bottle so that it's easier to dispense because I really do not like pouring out of paint cans. It's just annoying. Okay. So, I have my scale so that I can see sort of the ratios that I'm doing. Let's open up our paint. So deep base versus, like if you go to a paint store and you go to mix a custom color, there's light base, which kind of starts out as white and then you add tint to it. There's neutral base and then there's deep base. This is for like your really dark colors. And so this is the most transparent paint. Um, I've done blooms before with neutral base 
and it still dries clear, but I think not as clear as this. Okay, I'm going to start with two ounces of the polycrylic, and I'm putting the polycrylic down at the bottom because I think having something thin at the bottom will stop the thicker stuff from sticking to the sides of the cup. I think it'll help it mix better. And then I'm just going to use this little cup to help me scoop this out because I don't have a nice kind of pour top, and it is very thick. So two to one would be four ounces of this to one ounce of that. And it does look quite milky right now, but it does dry clear. And as you mix it with pigments or paints, yeah, it's clear. Let me grab a little stick here because I'm almost, there we go. So that's, I've got exactly six ounces here, which is two ounces of my polycrylic and four ounces of this. And I have a feeling I'm going to need, well, I was going to say, I have a feeling I'm going to need to add more of this, but it is so thick. I, I might add more polycrylic. Let's put it under here and we'll put the mixer down. All right. So this top button, I got to turn it to myself so I can see is the power and you press and hold for two seconds. There it goes. All right. So this is medium speed. If I press it again, it goes up to high speed. If you press it again, it goes to low speed. So low speed might be what you want for resin, so it really doesn't make a lot of bubbles. I think medium sounds good. Now, if we want to change the direction that it's mixing, you press this middle button, and it's it goes from clockwise to counterclockwise, or back again. So that's really great. And this stand, the height is adjustable. This is pretty cool. I'm not even standing there mixing. All right, let me turn it off. So to turn it off, you press and hold for two seconds. Whoop, beep. Um, so actually, I've got this uh, bigger paddle because I thought that's what I would need, but this nine ounce cup is too small at the bottom, so I'm gonna switch it out for, and the paddles just pop right out. It's easier than I made it look just then. I just didn't want to splatter paint everywhere. So I'm going to get a smaller paddle. Pop that right in there. And then I'll set this lower. This mixture is thicker than resin, so it's a little harder to get it off of the paddles. So I'm just going to grab a baby wipe and wipe it right off. If it's resin, you want to use an alcohol wipe because that helps clean all the resin residue. But this is not resin. All right. So it wipes off very, very easily. Very easy to clean. Great. All clean. So let's, I'm curious to see what this consistency is like. Okay, this does need to be thicker. I can tell that already. So I'm going to add some more of this house paint. Let's add another two ounces. Let's give that a mix here with the smaller paddle. So you can see it is mixing, and that's on the middle setting. I don't know if you can see, it is going now all the way down to the bottom. And you can sort of angle it around to really contact the sides. Or lift it up.
turning it up to the high speed just since it's a thicker mixture. All right. Okay, so look at that. Nice, creamy mix of pouring medium there. Oh, that looks great. That looks like a really, really good consistency. And that was so easy to mix. Awesome. All right, so I'll just pop this off pop. And then I'll clean this paddle. And then we're going to use this pouring medium to actually do a bloom pour. So you can see what I mean if you don't know what a bloom pour is, but we can also see how well this pouring medium works in real life. So let me clean this and I'll be right back. Okay, I've reset my station. I've cleaned up my resin mixer paddle. Uh, I've mixed up some colors now for this bloom pour that I'm going to do. So first of all, my pillow paint is another one that Lisa Marvin recommended. This is the Glidden Essentials Eggshell White Interior Paint. So that's what I got, but I've put some in a cup because, like I said, I really don't like pouring out of paint cans. Then my colors, I have Master's Touch Phthalo Blue, Creative Inspiration Sky Blue, and then I have two mica pigments. I have this little piggy sea glass, which I'm very excited. This is a beautiful color. And I have Let's Resin Chameleon Powder. This is golden, so it's a color shifting powder. So I'm very excited about both of those. And I've mixed them up with this pouring medium. Um, with the mica pigments, I did basically half an ounce of the pouring medium and a quarter teaspoon of the mica pigment and it looks beautiful. With the paint, it was a little bit more like kind of mix until it's the right consistency, but it was about one part paint to four or five parts of the pouring medium, just because these are pretty thick paints. If you were using thinner paints, like a craft fluid paint, or a, not, a, not like a pouring paint, but like a fluid acrylic, uh, it might be less. It might be one to two, one to three, I don't know. Anyway, so these the consistency is it's very thick if you're sort of a regular acrylic pour person, but it does flow very nicely. Okay, so there's sky blue, phthalo blue. This is golden, which is really cool. It's like a chocolate brown that shimmers gold. Anyway, I can tell already that this bloom pouring mixture with the bare deep base it is a much better one for the mica pigments they shimmer a lot more in this nice transparent base so that's excellent okay and then my cell activator is australian floetrol about three parts of that to one part amsterdam titanium white and i use this a couple weeks ago for my cell activator test. If you haven't seen my cell activator tests, you can find them here. It's great. It shows how Australian Floetrol stacks up against some ones that don't require Australian Floetrol. Anyway, that's, that's a thinner consistency than the paints. Um, I am going to add just a little bit more Australian Floetrol because it's been a couple weeks since I've used this and Jody Flynn gave me the tip that um, you can you can reuse it, you know, you can keep using leftovers, but if it's sat for a while, you may need to kind of refresh it with a little bit of fresh Australian Floetrol. So I'm gonna add just a tiny, tiny bit to it to give it the magic back again, and then we'll paint. So this is Australian Floetrol. It is different than US Floetrol. It has some special power to it that adds some nice lacing. So I'm just going to add a tiny amount. That's not even half an ounce. That's maybe, I don't know, that's not very much. And I'll give that a mix. Okay. Revitalized cell activator. So 
So let's start with some pillow paint. And so the pillow paint, you want to be thicker than the rest of your paints because you want the other paints to be able to sort of glide on top of them. I'm seeing some air bubbles, so let me torch those out really quick. Another tip I've learned from Lisa is if you sort of bang your canvas it, or your cup of paint, it helps draw the air bubbles up to the surface so they can pop more easily. And it relieves frustration if you feel mad at something. Uh, I'm gonna start by putting down the Thalo Blue, and these are really cute little um, silicone cups that I got. Try to use more reusable materials, but they're very small. Then I think I'm going to do Golden. I'm going to... Yeah. Boop. I'm sort of putting my Micahs in like an X, so my next one is going to be the sea glass. Actually, I don't know that I love that idea. Well, they both end up in the middle somewhat. And then I'm going to end with some of the sky blue. So now it's cell activator time, so I'm going to put this right in the middle. It's kind of sinking down a bit. Hopefully it's not too thin. Okay. So I'm going to sort of blow down and out. While I'm getting beautiful lacing, my blows ended up quite narrow. Um, so I'm just going to, what am I gonna do? I think I'm gonna add a little bit more cell activator to certain areas, just little dots of it, and, uh, and blow them out again. Maybe my pillow paint is too thick. Maybe that's why it's all sort of collapsing inward. But that works pretty well. That's cool. Okay, I think one more right here where it's still small. And then I will stretch it a bit. See how it works. Oh, that made some beautiful lacing right there. Okay. I'm gonna recenter it just a little bit. And let's give this a spin and see, whoa, see how it stretches. Okay. Right now this looks like a crazed jellyfish because all the tentacles are going everywhere. We've got some good lacing. My goodness, the mica powders are so shiny, which is amazing. So I'm really liking this new uh, bloom medium. All right, let's spin it again. Well, this is definitely a very messy bloom. So I'm going to spin it pretty hard, try to get it stretched as far as I can, because all these edges are just wacky. Um, I'll spin it. No, I'll keep spinning it this way. I really like this side. 
this dark blue is beautiful this side is not as good so actually I'm going to move it this way so that as I spin I'm gonna spin it a bit off center and see if I can send more of the paint moving this way and less moving that way Cool. Let's do it again. This is really neat. Okay, bringing it back this way because I don't want it traveling this way anymore, just this direction. All right, one more spin maybe? Very cool. I still really want more to travel this direction because it's it's just off center and this is my least favorite part. All right, one more spin. I keep saying that. I mean it this time. One more spin. Very cool. The other reason that I'm spinning a lot is because if you have too much paint on the surface of your canvas when you finish, uh, it'll continue to sort of move and warp and shift as it dries, and you don't want that. So you want to get as much off as you can, which means you don't want to start with too much. This is looking really pretty. The micas are definitely shimmering like crazy. Uh, I'll torch it one more time, and then I'll bring you in for a close-up. All right, here we go. So this is kind of wild and messy, but I got beautiful lacing and beautiful shimmer. Look at how shiny those mica powder areas are. You see that shine? So that's the sea glass there. And then of course the golden is just, it's beautiful. It's a little bit odd when it's the brown color, but then you so quickly get that gold color. And I think there's some of the sea glass on top of it because it's kind of greenish when you go this way. So it's just really cool. But yeah, we've got, we got some beautiful lacing there from the cell activator. I need to learn how to blow more neatly, but that section is just so cool. Really, really cool. All right, thanks guys for watching this video and learning how I mix my pouring medium for bloom pours. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever done a bloom pour or is that something that you have not yet tried? Have you ever used a resin mixer like this? Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you again for another video very soon. Bye.